Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello, and welcome back to the channel where you join me today to collect the GTR Roadster and talk a bit more about why I have bought that car as one of the Shmi mobiles. Well, at the moment, we're actually in the GTR Pro heading to Pandora Car Alarms. We're about a week ago, we came up with the GTR Roadster and also with the Taycan, my first long distance journey in the EV, which was certainly interesting to say the least, a little bit of range anxiety. Well, Pandora have now installed the Smart Pro system System, which today I'm going to demonstrate because it has some awesome features to show you and then we're going to be driving back down towards home with both of the AMG GTs to talk a bit more about how these work in the garage. In typical fashion, the weather is grim. It is always grim at the moment. I'm sorry, I talk about it all the time. It's the very British thing to do. But we're cruising in this car, which I've said many times before, we're actually just driving isn't really the best, it's too firm, it's too hardcore. And the GTR Roadster, as soon as I got back in it, having collected the car, it just felt so much more at home and suited to driving on the normal roads. It has things that this car doesn't have, like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring. This just has regular cruise control, but otherwise it's all pretty similar, it has to be said. Anyway, the GTR Roadster has the new system now from Pandora. I will show you all of that when we get there. It's about a two hour journey then to get back home later on, over a hundred miles away. And the GTR Roadster up to this point has only done a few hundred miles, so it's gonna be good to get that back on the roads and actually to go straight from this car into the Roadster to again, feel the differences. And you guys know how much I like the AMG GTs. I've made no secret of that over the last three, three and a bit years now. Let's get to Pandora and see how the Roadster is. We are arriving here then. There's actually the Pandora Demonstrator Audi R8 V10 just outside. And then behind that shutter on the left at Pandora Car Alarms, we will find the GTR Roadster. So let me get this parked up just for the moment. Always slightly awkward to do this with the kind of bucket seat and problem I'm going to enforce upon myself with the Roadster when we go ahead and change the seats. But for the moment, as the weather gets a little bit worse, we will park this up and go inside and check it out. I've just been having a complete run through of all of the things that I can now control on this car via an app on my phone. It is very cool what you can do. I'm gonna demonstrate some of the standout features, but the GTR Roadster has been here with Pandora UK for the installation of their latest Smart Pro V3 system. It's an ultimate security device, a discreet installation with multiple sensors hidden away, wirelessly talking to one another that acts as an alarm and an immobilizer, but also gives you all sorts of data and logs of what the car has been up to, along with control control over various things that I'm going to show you in a moment, including opening and closing the roof remotely from an app wherever you are in the world. It's awesome what this can do. So let me just grab my phone out of my pocket so that I can show you some of this. I've got the app installed. In fact, I've got quite a few automotive themed apps at the moment, including some EV apps as well. But here we have Pandora Connect, where you are presented with a view with numerous different things that we can do. So at the bottom here, you can see the map. You can see exactly where we are. It keeps logs of things that have been going on. Then you have the controls that I'm going to run through in a moment. And then you have the graphics of the car, which show you live what is going on. So at the moment it's in park, for example, you can set the color and you can change the type of car with more to come as well. But for example, I don't have the key on me at the moment. You will see that the car is locked. We cannot get in, but if we press this, it instantly gives us the double chirp and the car is now unlocked. In fact, you can see it's connected on Bluetooth. If you're close to the car, it's on Bluetooth. If you're far away, it uses GSM or 4G. So you could literally do this from anywhere in the world. If we then lock it, you get the single chirp, the car is locked again. And also, I don't know if you noticed when it was unlocked, just to do this, and I open the door on the app, it will then show us that the door is open. And in fact, if we also open up the boot, give that a pop, we get a different chirp, lift up the boot and come and open the passenger door as well, just because it's all a bit of fun. You can see the boots open and even, let's open up the bonnet just down here a pull of that who doesn't like coming around to see the four litre bi-turbo v8 that we have in here all of the different parts of the car showing us exactly what's going on of course this does need a few more miles on the clock at the moment only a few hundred but all coming in due course let me drop this down close always a very loud noise but the way you have to do it close all of it up because i want to show you the roof in action one of my absolute favorite bits of functionality because i can relate to it in the real world. So let's say you've hopped out of your car, you've locked it and you've gone to do some shopping or gone to a cafe or whatever it may be. You've headed off away from the car. You're not in sight of it, but then the weather turns into something like this, a little bit miserable, a little bit gray and drizzling. Obviously you do not want a convertible car 
parts with the roof down when it starts to rain. But this is where you can do the very clever thing of grabbing your app, being back in here, which is all connected and synced up to this car with an immense layer of security behind it, believe me, and things you can control. But then with the roof down, if we press on this side, you can literally from here, kickstart the roof process. You don't need to hold the button down. It will close itself. It's running all of the commands in the background to ensure that it runs through the process, the flaps at the back, the roof, and putting the windows up as well. And then your car is locked with the roof back up. Like that, nice and safe. You didn't even need to come there to see it. And of course, you can go vice versa. But just quickly to show you here, we've got battery status. Uh, you can see engine temps and things and various bits of information, even the, uh, the outside temperature. But I don't think it's 16 degrees outside. It must be uh, inside, obviously, where we are or where the car is at the moment. But a short while thereafter, let's say you're coming back towards your car. Let's say you're away up the street from it, walking down the road towards the car and the weather's nice again. You want to drive it with the roof open. You then do the exact opposite. Press this button, unlock it, windows drop down, the roof folds back, and it controls those flaps just behind as well. Now, there are lots of other things that this can do. You can also press and hold in the middle if you had the functionality enabled, which I don't on this car, but we will go and demonstrate it on the Demonstrator R8 to actually remotely start the car. I chose not to have that. You can press this button and the car will literally fire up from the app. Of course, in America, for example, you can do that from the key of cars, but here in Europe, we don't normally have that functionality available. But this app offers that and a lot more. There are so many things you can customize and configure. It will keep the logs, like I said, of when the alarm goes off. It offers security functionality on a level that I've never really come across before. For example, the car has a brain that you can phone and talk to, and if you need to shut it off for some reason, you can call up, enter your multiple security pins from the phone number that it recognizes, or from a spare phone if you've got an extra security code, and you can shut it down the next time it comes to a stop, which is mind-bogglingly cool. Absolutely amazing what it can do, all through a system which just is tucked away, nice and hidden, nice and discreet, yeah, pretty cool. Let's go see the remote start though on the R8. Coming back outside then, where the weather continues to be atrocious, let's give this a go. The car is parked here. I do at the moment have the key. I'm gonna demonstrate the remote start from the key and then also from the app just after. But at the moment, the car is completely locked. There is nobody inside. Just to demonstrate this, the door is locked, pressing the button, not releasing. And all you have to do to remote start it with the module installed is a triple press of the lock button. Give it one go. That's all you've got to do. It's notifying us. Wait a second. <laughs> Just like that, we get a cold start of the R8 V10. Sounding awesome. It's that easy. After it's then been running for a short while, we can do the same process again to turn it off. So literally, lock, 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 and the car will turn itself off just like that. But not only can you do this from the key, but you can also do the remote start from the Pandora app, which at the moment is of course either connected over Bluetooth or over GSM. It's just waiting for the update. There we go to say that the engine has stopped. That's a case of pressing the button. That's all you've got to do to send the command to the car. It did the blink where we saw it go from one tail light to the other. Wait a moment and it starts up that easily from the key or well, from the app or the key, whichever it might be. That's really, really cool to have seen. I like that. It's time then to get the journey continued in the GTR Roadster following the Pro. Obviously, the first thing that I am gonna to need to do though is to put the roof back up, which is that way, he says, or is it the other way? I'm not even sure that way. I did get it wrong the first time around. Obviously, if I'd been a little bit more prepared, I could have just done this from the app before I climbed on board the car. You can do it while driving. Wait one second, all up in place, does not take very long, and out we cruise. It's amazing how different this car feels already to the Pro. The Pro is so much firmer and more aggressive, and obviously at the moment we've got a leather steering wheel in here instead of the Dynamica, the Mercedes-Benz equivalent to Alcantara, but this is car that's just a little bit more dailyable, a little bit softer, a little bit more gentle, a little bit more of a comfortable cruise, a little bit more of a, just a, an all round usable car. So this is, this is fundamentally why I bought it as well, because I realized how much the Pro is so much a track machine. It's so much a hardcore experience in comparison 
comparison. And obviously, I have a mad obsession with these things. I bought the AMG GTR Coupe originally as my first Mercedes-Benz without really knowing what I was gonna be in store for, but I found it so fantastic to own, and the Pro and the Roadster so far are so fantastic to own, and the Black Series is around the corner. So yes, it's turned into a little bit more of an obsession, that's for sure, but an obsession that comes out of the fact that these are what I enjoy driving the most. Of, of all cars, this is my format, front mid-engined. That's why I love the Ferraris with the NAV12s, the Mercedes with the V8 by turbos, because it's a format that's sporty when you want it to be, but also so comfortable to use all the time. You feel like you're being pulled rather than pushed as you are with a mid-engine supercar that just, it's just a more relaxing experience all in. It's just a more all-round comfortable drive. And to be honest, that's quite often what you want. This is a sporty daily, you know, this is a car that you can use as a daily car, but it is still mega and exciting when you want it to be. This could be more exciting, yes, if we did something with the sound, if we did something, well, if we put some bucket seats in it as the plan is at the moment. So it will potentially transform down the line. But when you're just driving along, it's just a nice car. It's just a really, really nice car to drive. It feels fantastic. Yeah, okay, there's some road noise because obviously we've got Sport Cup 2s. Despite having a soft top, it's not unreasonable at all. Just a shame that even though we've only got 300 or so miles on the clock, we're now driving it in miserable, grimy December UK weather yet again. Anywho, let's continue with the journey. It is, we're only 3 p.m. and we haven't yet stopped for lunch, so that will be our first port of call before we continue onwards down towards London. I've talked about it many times before, but I'm sure attention is going to be brought to the fact that I'm driving like a granny, very slowly, very boringly, and that is of course because this car is still going through its running in process. You have to do, as this sticker right in front of me tells me, a thousand miles of driving the car very, very gently. And that is exactly what I will do to prolong the life of the engine to ensure it will be highly maintained throughout its life. It's important to me because with these cars, I drive them hard, I track them, I push them, and take them on many, many miles of road trips and adventures, and I might end up keeping them forever, so of course I want to do it properly, and if it takes a little bit of driving it gently to begin with, it could be worse, you know, it could be worse than having to do some easy, smooth, relaxing miles. You don't want to keep it on cruise control, because it's not good for the engine to stay at the same RPM for the entirety of a long journey through the running-in process, a bit of up and down, but it's still better to do this and just make sure the fluids flow correctly as opposed to kind of full lag, doing a kick down downshift and booting it from the off. So we will play by the rules or at least play by the recommendations and manufacturer stated policy for running in a car while we drive in miserable weather down the motorways, a little bit over 100 miles to get back home. This has been a very long and very tiring journey, but I am now back in London and just for fun, I am actually gonna put the roof down. I've done the button the wrong way again. It's like that, that way. One day I'll get it right and get it right first time. It just feels very unnatural. At least it's not really raining anymore, just a small amount. This car's still a long way from being run in though. Um, needs to do a thousand miles, so we're halfway there. Um, 500 more miles or so of gentle driving before we can start to unleash it and hopefully come the spring, head out towards the Nürburgring with this, with the Taycan, with the GR Yaris. And the only other car in the garage that's never done a lap of the Nordschleife is the Heritage Focus RS. So at some point I'm clearly going to have to take that car over to Germany just to do a ring lap. But you can see, I guess, for journeys like this, I know today's a bit of an exception coming back from Pandora because this was the purpose of the day. But for general purposes, if we're going out to Dub Customs or heading to Topaz or going to one of the various places I visit, or just using a car to enjoy driving, um, to head out of town, whatever it might be, this is going to be the go-to because at the G63, don't get me wrong, I, I love using it, um, but obviously it's, it's a big, heavy car, it's not an agile sports car like this is. Uh, much more appropriate when we're lugging stuff around and the Taycan will eventually be the machine to go to and from the unit to go back and forth. That's at least going to be the plan. Um, and journeys that don't need the fear of finding an EV charging point. So this will take precedence, that's going to be the plan with it. Oh dear, cruising, gentle journey, I'm absolutely shattered. It's been a very, very, very long week, actually. <laughs> Lots of really late nights um, working, sorting stuff out, 
We're nearly home. Made it back home then, and we've now had a couple of occasions where both of the AMG GTs have been here in the garage together. And yes, as always, I'm not leaving that there. I have my other space on a slightly lower level. It's a nightmare to get a car like this down, but it'll be easier to take the Roadster down than it would be to take the Pro down, thanks to that front splitter. But they are very different cars. And I tell you, after driving, well, it's been, what, two and a bit hours that I've been driving in this car? These seats, I just find them too firm for me. I've talked so much about this. The AMG performance seats, and the reason I'm gonna change them from what you would think are the comfort seats to have a set of these buckets in the Roadster instead, is that I find this bucket such a better shape for me, and seats are a very personal thing, but for me, that works so much better than these do, even though you wouldn't realize it. So that's why I want to change them, because I want this car to be super usable, and it doesn't sound obvious that a bucket seat would be more usable than its performance seat equivalent, but for some reason, for me, I find that to be the case with both of these. And as I mentioned a number of times before, the bucket seats from AMG are actually based on the same bucket seat as the bucket seats in the McLarens, like in the 675LT, so it's no surprise that given I've always found the McLaren very comfortable, I'd always found the AMG GTR very comfortable as a result as well. Plus, it's just gonna be cool to have a two-seat convertible with a fixed wing with bucket seats in it as well, and maybe even more noise because it is so quiet and docile based on its current exhaust sound but I think we could probably do a little bit about that as well. Anyway, a big thanks to Pandora UK for installing the Smart Pro system into the GTR Roadster. I will, of course, pop the information down below if you'd like to find out more about that system and how it all works and some of the other features that I didn't even get time to mention in this one. For now, though, I look forward to getting to grips with it all, learning even more. Just awesome now to have these two back in the garage and plan some things ahead with them. That's it for now, though. Again, a big thanks to Pandora and, of course, to you guys, as always, for your support. But that's it for this time, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!